Okay, so welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're taking a look at Oddworld Munch's Odyssey on the Nintendo Switch, a game that's been on pretty much every console since its original release nearly 20 years ago. The question is, can it still impress and has it found its best home yet in the Switch eShop? Well, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family, and let's get started. It's so a story here and we basically get two separate tales that quickly merge to create the team of Abe and Munch. Munch's story, his world is very much collapsing around him. What was once a world where he was, you know, surrounded by friends is now a place of loneliness and all but himself are gone after disappearing. Before he knows it, he's captured and taken to a lab. Here he is to be, let's say, used to capture any remaining friends out there with this like sonar device. Now in true video game style though you get an opportunity to escape, save your race, save creatures by the name of Fuzzles and try not to die. Abe on the other hand then he's out to save his brothers and keep them away from the slavery they seem to pretty much always end up in. Eventually though both Abe and Munch's paths cross, they join forces and yeah it's time to save the day. So Oddworld it's always had a very dark tone to its storytelling outside of you know what may appear as cartoon visuals and that's very much continued with this third entry to the franchise. It's entertaining stuff but you will find some actually serious statements if you are looking for them. So finally with Story, if you haven't played the first two games and you're concerned you may be lost, Munch's Odyssey I will say has you covered with a 15 minute prologue made up of all the old cutscenes and it's more than enough to really catch you right up, it, it's not remastered in any way, it still holds that old school aspect ratio from the time, but it's a nice inclusion and a great crash course on the world of Oddworld and its inhabitants. Overall the story it very much holds up to this day, balancing what I would say are almost like social statements with humour to great effect. So Oddworld Munch's Odyssey was a first for the series, it shifted from 2D to 3D. Now I will say on a gameplay front this remaster comes with no quality of life improvements on the gameplay, meaning it very much has all the, you know, the highs and lows you would expect from an early 2000s 3D platformer. The design of this one, it's very much traditional at its core, you know, free movement to explore, the occasional puzzle, and then look for the next exit to move to that next location. Level design here, it's like small open areas, and while the exit's always in the same place, the experience definitely affides feeling too linear because you can pretty much go any direction you want and, and make your own path to it. The controls themselves then they're solid enough, they can be I will say a little bit slippery on their feet and they won't instantly react to your input but I personally believe this was very much based on a design decision to match their physical builds and the limitations of them. Then of course we do get the platforming, it, it's okay for the most part but I will say it can be frustrating as you fall from edges or need to make precision landings. There's especially a few water based moments where it took me forever to get my landing onto the platforms just right because the controls are just a, a little bit inaccurate. Where Oddworld Munch's Odyssey separated itself, and I still think it does to this day, was the ability to not only utilise the friends that you save around the environment, but then the ability to switch between the two characters freely. Those that you save, you can basically expect some basic commands including get to work so they'll assist you in key moments, tell them to stop and wait, very useful in situations where, you know, the game's AI just can't handle like navigating things that blow up, and then of course attack. This attack function I'll say now absolutely essential thanks to what I will say are seriously lacking combat skills for Abe and Munch. Then the big one, the ability to jump between Abe and Munch. It's not just the visual thing, though I will say it's definitely appreciated in that sense, but both have different strengths and weaknesses. Abe, he's quicker on his feet, he can jump higher, he can lift those that can't reach certain places, including Munch, and even possess and control enemies. Then Munch, slow initially, but can get access to like this super fast wheelchair, has the ability to swim, and can even electrocute his enemies. Both Abe and Munch then get access to short-lived power-ups or maybe take control of certain things within the environment, and you'll find these scattered around nearly every level. 
So being a 3D platformer though of the early 2000s, it's not without its problems. First up, it's to be expected, but the camera will be the bane of your life. Very few then achieved a decent camera, especially for 3D platformers, and this is just another example. While I don't think they really have many options to fix it, honestly, I will say the camera will at times get lost, get stuck on the environment, lose track of the enemies you're looking at, and then those tighter locations, just good luck with that, it's gonna go crazy. It's not awful, but it's just worth knowing, and I think most of you who you know, look into this one know it's gonna come with its issues. Then the enemies, I will say, considering how limited Abe and Munch's attack abilities are, you know, you're not Mario, you're not jumping on heads for insta-kills, the game acts like you're some sort of battle-hardened warrior as they just throw like wave upon wave at you. It seems more like an overwhelm tactic than anything. Fortunately, that's not frequent, but the combat, I will say, it was rarely fun. It was basically a case of either run away, exploit the dumb AI, or just wait for your friends to, to beat them up on your behalf. The game just has no sense of explaining, you know, what your enemy's life stands at, or if you're even connecting their hits with them. It makes it just very unrewarding, but it also kind of feels luck-based as you wait to see the outcome and to see if you survive. My biggest problem with munches though, they connect too much to the B button. This one button is basically interact with objects, jump, and then for Abe, pick up your friends. Sadly, the game just doesn't always understand what you're trying to do, and it was just infuriating as, you know, I was trying to press a button and Abe jumped, or I was trying to get in my wheelchair and Munch pressed the button instead. Separating out this functionality honestly would be my biggest request for a fix. The game just too frequently misunderstands what you're trying to do, and you'll need to make like micro adjustments and just keep on like trying your luck, hoping that it finally does what you're asking it to. Look, I'll say this, overall I had a great time with Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. I knew it was going to have problems. Sure, the combat is poor and the camera has its moments of weakness. But if you're coming here for some fun little puzzle moments, a decently sized world to explore, I will say you'll have a great time thanks to its you know, unique combination of switchable characters and then those around you you can interact with. If you're a fan and you've played them before, this is very much a straight port with nothing new to add. But you know what? I'll honestly take any excuse to revisit this world. You just need to come with a focus on the exploration, puzzle solving and light platforming moments rather than looking for something like combat based. It is a great game, honestly, it's just definitely starting to show its age. I mean, 20 years. It's kind of impressive it's still being released at this point. So while we mention age, visually speaking, it's definitely starting to show it. It is though still pretty nice as far as remasters go. It's a clean and sharp looking presentation. You know, while it would be easy to point out the locations can be a little uninspired and the texture work a little bit low, I, I am factoring in age today. And for what they had at the time, they did a great job taking you from like lush green scenery, that kind of have like these signs like Jurassic Park style, to sewers and laboratories. Very much like its storyline, it captures a nice balance of the bright and vivid, alongside some more, I will say, dull and sinister locations. It's for sure dated, there's no question about it, but I think going in, you know, recognise this is remaster, not remake. Problems as a few, I suffered with the occasional frame rate drops and I kind of think that's a little bit weird for a game that's nearly 20 years old at this point. And then in the latter half I will say I was getting a bit of burnout with the locations, I feel like repetition was slowly kicking in. The big one though, it's got to be the cutscenes. These are just pixelated as anything, they're still locked to the old school 4-3 aspect ratio. While I do appreciate them, you know, I, I definitely think there's some great work on show here, they definitely could have benefited from a bit of an upgrade. They're entertaining as I say, but they're just jarring when you compare them to the fancy new widescreen image that the gameplay's been dressed up in. Overall, like visuals, it's very much just a HD re-release of an old game and that's, that's pretty clear. <laughs> Audio then, and I gotta say, it's not bad at all. Impressively, we're getting full face acting. There's some nice environmental sounds like enemies, they sound like truly menacing. And then the music, that's really good. I don't wanna spend too much time on this area though, it's again an old game, but for its time, it was seriously impressive. The only problem I have, and it was the same back then, they just say the same thing over and over again. It was doing my head in, especially when you get your friends to help you out, they do this chant, like when they're opening a door or something, and it's just, pretty much one of the most annoying things I've ever heard and I quickly started to dread these moments coming up. 
Also here the mix is a little bit all over the place. Sometimes like important dialogue is being drowned out by the movement of enemies or background noises. It could do with a little bit of rebalancing if anything, but to be honest like 20 years old full face acting some really good music, it's still pretty impressive. So overall, Oddworld Munchies Odyssey is very much a product of its time, bringing some fantastic storytelling, a brave shift as well from 2D to 3D, and some fun exploration and puzzles to play with. Sadly at this point it is showing its age though with some repetitive environments, cameras that are going to get stuck, weak combat, and very much dated cutscenes. Also don't forget the chanting, the chanting will drive you insane, stuff of nightmares. But look. I gotta say this, if you're a fan of the series, I highly recommend revisiting it. The problems I've mentioned were always there. We've just seen advancements in the games we play now that we kind of pick up on them a little bit easier. The only thing is now, I'm not sure if I would recommend this one to someone new who's never experienced the series, and I'd probably send them to Stranger's Wrath instead. It's a fantastic entry. It combined action platforming and first person shooting. Plus here, I gotta be honest, the price point's insane. It's on sale right now with 33% off to celebrate this launch but after that I expected it to be like $30, £27, €30 Euros, or $45 Australian dollars. That's insane. Do not pay that much for this one. If you don't pick it up in this initial sale, wait for the following inevitable sale. Today I'm going to be giving Oddworld Munchies Odyssey an above average 6 out of 10. This comes though with a stipulation. If you are a fan of the series, I absolutely recommend you pay this one a revisit. It will still have all the charm you'll remember, but you might start to identify the, you know, the issues a little bit easier. Thanks for watching today. Will you or have you already picked this one up? Are you excited for it? With that though, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do. Join our growing family and we'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.